Well, welcome back. We're looking at how the world sees the 50 days of demonetization. With us, Natasha Serene, economist at Harvard, and Sadhanand Dume, columnist at the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Sadhanand, you know, you were talking about the need of this government to try and reclaim the reform narrative. The government sees this, by the way, as a big bang reform. But I, I, I'll draw your attention to a conversation that I had with the coal and power minister, Piyush Goyal, today. And I think the realization there is that the need of the hour is now, and I'm quoting him, mature and stable policy. So perhaps less shock and all kind of uh, announcements, at least that's the sense that I got. Uh, how would you now, or uh, what would you expect as far as the road ahead is concerned? Well, what I would expect and what I would like to see are two very different things. Um, but, you know, coming back to your earlier point about, you know, uh, the world emulating India, uh, I think that's faintly ludicrous. I mean, we have to be clear that no stable economy, not in a crisis, has done anything remotely this drastic in the past. And I'd be very, very surprised if any stable economy not in a crisis uh, follows India's path in doing this extreme sudden demonetization. So let's get that out of the way. Um, I think what needs to be done, in fact, is Big Bang. But what it needs, what we need are the kind of Big Bang reforms that people have been talking about for more than a decade that people had expected Narendra Modi to do. We need to see more movement on, on uh, labor laws. We'd need to see at least one or two big ticket privatizations. Um, I'd like to see them maybe take a stab at land in some way. I mean, there were big things. To their credit, they did GST. I hope GST uh, sort of, in fact, is implemented. But you, this doesn't become a big bang reform merely because it is, it's had a very large impact. There's, there has to be an element of this being a reform and not simply being a big bang. And that's where I disagree with the government. So what would your headline be for the, for the Wall Street Journal, Southern? And if I were to ask you at the end of 50 days, what would your headline be today? I would say that India has, this has been a self-inflicted wound committed by the government. And I hope that they recognize this, not explicitly, but at least implicitly, and put in place reforms that can bring back the narrative that India is on the right path under this government and is, uh, and is about to modernize successfully, as many people had hoped. Okay, that's a long headline, but Natasha, let me end by asking you now. In terms of indicators, to get really a sense of the kind of drift that we've seen in the economy and what we can expect in terms of normalcy returning or to really get a sense of whether the worst is in fact behind us, what are the indicators that you would watch out for? So, I mean, I think we need to keep our eye quite closely attuned to these GDP project projections. And I think in doing so, we should also recognize what the government is going to do in the coming months in terms of both fiscal and monetary policy. So I'm kind of watching to see what the Central Bank of India decides to do about rate hikes in January of 2017. I'm curious to see whether, as the government promised, these demonetization efforts provide sort of the funds needed to do a large-scale fiscal stimulus uh, to do some sort of infrastructure push to kind of regain footing on the growth trajectory that India found itself before demonetization and hopefully India will find its way towards again in 2017. Well, uh, we certainly hope that that will be the case. 2017 is, uh, is barely 24 hours away, and a lot can happen in 24 hours because the Prime Minister is expected to speak. So will he make further Big Bang announcements? We don't know. Uh, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. We will be covering all of that live right here. So that's the end of New Year's Eve for most of us. But Sadhanand and Natasha, thanks very much for joining us. Here's wishing uh, both of you the, a very happy New Year, and we hope the 2017 brings you lots of luck. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, that's the Foreign Media Roundtable for you. And with that, it is time for us to wrap up this special edition.